we continue to monitor a case in Britain involving toddler Alfie Evans as London's Court of Appeals upholds the High Court's ruling to remove his life support. Alfie is a 21-month-old with an unknown neurological degenerative condition who has been in a semi-vegetative state. British doctors have said further medical efforts are futile and his condition is untreatable. Alfie's parents want continued care for their son and are asking for him to be transferred to the Vatican-linked Bambino Gesù Pediatric Hospital in Rome. We are joined now by a top bioethics expert who's been closely tracking the case. Leslie J. Smith is an award-winning author, a senior fellow at the Discovery Institute's Center on Human Exceptionalism, and a consultant to the Patients' Rights Council. Leslie, thanks for being back with us. Thanks for having me. This case is drawing a lot of comparisons to Charlie Gard, a case many of our viewers may remember from last year. What's similar here and what's the difference? It's strikingly similar, but if I can say it, it's even worse. Uh, mm -hmm. Charlie Gard was bad enough, but this is worse. Wow. The difference is Charlie Gard uh, had a diagnosis. We knew, the doctors knew, that he had a genetic condition, that it was a terminal condition, that the chances of the doctor who wanted to help him in New York mm -hmm. uh, succeeding were probably very small, but the parents wanted to give it a try. Right. In Alfie's case, there is no diagnosis. There is no surety that, that Alfie is dying. He has a profound cognitive disability. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're basically saying, well, that's not a life worth living. And if you think so, parents, even though you found another hospital to take him to for treatment, we're going to stop the treatment anyway. Wow. So it's taking Charlie Gard and taking, <coughs> excuse me, and taking another step down that road. And it's only been not even a year since the Charlie Gard case. You have been tracking and writing about Alfie Evans. And in a piece for National Review, you write, forcing this baby to die when there is no diagnosis would be an act of naked medical authoritarianism. Can you expand on what you mean by that? Well, yeah, you have a situation in which you have a value judgment conflict. It's not a medical conflict. Hmm. The doctors are saying this is not a life worth living. Wow. So we want to stop the treatment, not because the treatment isn't working. The treatment's keeping Alfie alive. Mm -hmm. They want to stop the treatment because it is working. In other words, they're saying that Alfie is, is the one who's futile. The parents are saying, wait a minute, this is our precious baby. We've got another hospital willing to treat him. There is no diagnosis. Let us try to fight to save our baby's life. And, and the, the state is saying, no, you can't do that, parents. The doctor's values prevail. The state's values prevail. And if that isn't uh, naked authoritarianism, I'm not sure what is. What rights do parents have over their child's medical care in the UK? It's less than we have here. Mm. Uh, there is a requirement in the UK, as I understand it, that the uh, child's interest be protected. And, and what's really ridiculous to me mm. is they're saying that the interest, the best interest of Alfie is to die, rather than to see if something can be done Without a diagnosis, perhaps something can occur. He's a young child. Right. Maybe the, the brain will bounce back from whatever caused the problem. At least give the parents the right to, to uh, try to save their child's life. But what's really frightening is they're saying that a life with a profound disability is worse than life itself and that's uh, than dying. And that's a, that's a terrible thing. That's a devastating message it's to a, our brothers and sisters with sure it is. different disabilities. <clears throat> Finally, you know, from a bioethics standpoint, how do you think healthcare professionals should balance efforts to prolong a life and, but with the decision to withhold treatment if death is inevitable? I think when you get down to value judgments, that the values of the patient or the values of the parents in a case like mm -hmm. this should prevail unless it can be shown absolutely that it is completely uh, antithetical to mm. the child's welfare or to the patient's welfare. That's normally not the case. We're not talking about a situation where the parents are saying, do something that is clearly not going to work. Right. That would be futile. We're doing, we're talking about something, and I want to repeat something I said before, mm -hmm. that the parents are saying, do what is working, and the doctor's saying, we don't want it to work anymore, that's why we want to take away the treatment. That becomes quite frightening, and when you introduce coercion into a health care system mm -hmm. where trust is already beginning to leach away, I think it's a very frightening prospect. We should not have coercion in health care. Most people, by the way, are going to make the right decision for their loved ones. I really hope we don't have to talk about any more cases like this. I'm afraid we, we might. Wesley J. Smith, thank you again for your insight on this. Well, thanks for having me.